Yuga Cycles, even if you have not heard of the Yuga Cycles, there's a chance that you've heard of something called the Golden Age, or maybe even the Silver Age or the Dark Ages, right? Or just the name of one of these ages, like the Kali Yuga, right? Which is the Dark Ages. Well, the ages, the Yuga Cycles, the Golden Age, the Bronze Age, the Silver Age, the Dark Age, they're almost all ancient scriptures in the world actually speak of these ages. However, there is only one scripture that actually gives you dates. And we're going to talk about those dates in a minute. Firstly, what are these scriptures, right? What are these cycles? Well, there is an individual. He's a Greek poet. His name was Hesiod between 750 and 650 BC. In his poem, Works and Days, he specifies the ages of man, right? But within this, he does something a little different than what other cultures did. He specified the ages by talking about how mankind is, humankind is in those moments, okay? What they act like. So he said, the golden age, the golden age is the only age that falls within the rule of Cronus. That's what he said. Created by the immortals who live on Olympus. These humans were said to live among the gods and freely mingled with them. There was also the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, the Heroic Age, and the Iron Age, spoke about by many civilizations. But the one civilization that actually speaks about it and gives dates would be the ancient Vedic civilization in which they have the cycles of time, right? But they also talk about when these dates actually happened and what we can look forward to in the future. Now, another component here, for especially for the a couple of individuals that said they never heard about the cycles, Chances are you might have heard of the fact that the Mayan calendar is a secular calendar, that ancient calendars are secular, that we became uh, very linear when Caesar created the new calendar and we moved away from the 13 zodiacs and time goes in circles and all that. All that information is actually information derived from the whole understanding of the ages, ages of man. So here are the ages that we can see as specified by all ancient cultures, but this is in the Vedic text. We have the Golden Age, and that's at the top. It's called the Satya Yuga. And you can see that's actually the longest age. So thank God for that, right? It's actually the Golden Age is the longest experience on Earth. Under that, we have the Treta Yuga, which is the Silver Age. And then that's a little smaller than the Golden Age. And then we have the Dvarpa Yuga, which is the Bronze Age. And then we have the Kali Yuga, which is the dark age or, you know, the, the dark age, basically the dark age when we go through suffering, struggle, separation, duality. So you can look at the golden age as this time for oneness and unity, unity consciousness. Communication is probably um, telepathic. We have this ability to connect to the divine at a much easier rate. And you can look at the Kali Yuga as an age where we are in a lot of density, a lot of division, um, struck um higher hierarchical structures are there too leaders leaders that don't have your best interest in mind sound familiar so that is the kali yuga this is um directly from the vedic text in which they speak about the the dates here so let's go over some of these dates so here is the the whole cycle of time and we're going to start right at the top over here at the spiritual age of um the satya yuga each of the yugas are basically 13,000 years on each side. So one side is 13,000 years, Kali, Dwarpa, Tretha, Satya. The other side is 13,000 years and plus or minus a few hundred years, right? So it comes out to around 26,000 years. The Satya Yuga is 48, about 4,800 years long. And the last time we were in the Satya Yuga was right here. 6,700 BC, okay? And then before that, we were in all the way up until 11,500 BC, we were still in the golden age, but then 4,000 years before that as well, we were in the golden age on the other side, on the flip side of it all. So we had a lot of time within this golden age. 11,500 BC is actually the same time as the end of the last ice age and has been spe uh, speculated to be the last time, the last uh, cataclysmic disaster that occurred that made Atlantis sink underwater. So we have the golden age here. And in this golden age, there is, as I said before, telepathy, the veils are thin, very easy to communicate with our, uh, our fellow human beings, um, create peace and harmony. 
And then we went into what's called the mental age, which is the Threta Yuga. So from the golden age and the spiritual age, we went into this mental age where it became very heady, that we started really implementing our thought process and creating structures and societies and empires and civilizations. Things weren't as spontaneous anymore. They became way more structured. And that happened around 6,700 BC to 3,100 BC. So we had around 3,000 to 3,000 600 years of that age and as we were falling from that age the density of the planet was increasing until we get to 3100 bc when we entered the age of energy which was also the symbolized um, a huge war took place on the planet in 3100 bc I, f I forget the exact name but in the indian text it was something like the, the war of the seven kingdoms or something like that game of thrones right the war of all those kingdoms is pretty much actually a representation, a, fan, uh, a fantastical representation of the war that actually took place around 3100 BC. So we were falling from grace, division was creating and taking a foothold on the planet. A war broke out. This war is also known as the Mahabharata. If you heard of the Indian text, uh, the Mahabharata, the Indian Bible, which is the Bhagavad Gita, is only like one chapter within this huge epic called the Mahabharata, which is about a war that has Arjuna and Krishna against Arjuna's brother, in which brothers are fighting brothers and division has been created. It was a time where brothers fought brothers and this had not happened before. The Trojan War is another example. The Trojan War is the Mahabharata War. Also happened around the same time right here, 3100 BC, as we we're falling from grace. But then we moved into what's called the Energy Age, where we started cultivating and realizing energy, frequency, vibration, sound even. Even more so, this information was coming back, but we're utilizing in a different way, in energy, with the energy that we we're discovering. As time started progressing even more forward into the future, we eventually ended up in the Dark Ages, the Material Ages, starting in around 700 BC. The Material Age represents what? Materialism represents what? Check it out, this beautiful didgeridoo right here. Actually, this is a representation of the Kali Yuga because it's a dark age instrument. The reason why it was created is in order to use tools, external tools, in order to create and harness energy. So in the dark ages, in the Kali Yuga, we went to this whole reality where we started utilizing external tools to harness energy. Say that again, external tools to harness energy go back 13,000 years into the golden age, they were using consciousness to harness energy. They were using acoustic machines, stone temples, harnessing sound and frequency. And you can look at the ancient history presentation to see how they were using those stone structures that in order to do that, right? In order to funnel sound and vibration. So we went to this age where we became very separate, separate and very dual, dualistic. This age lasted for quite some time, but ended, is actually ended. The dark ages has gone. Some people say that we're still in the Kali Yuga, but if you look at the one text that talks about the times and the years, you can realize that this text actually says that we ed exited the Kali Yuga in 1700 AD, right around the Renaissance then. And then there was 200 years of transition to now, 1900. So from 1700 to 1900, we were in a transitory phase of one cycle to another cycle, the Kali Yuga to the Dwarpa Yuga. So what's happening now is we're re-entering the energy age. So now what usually happens is the age that we're in, we utilize the awareness of the age before to further the, the uh, consciousness of that age. So for example, We've lived in a material age. Now we're moving into an energy world, right? Where we're realizing quantum physics, subatomic world, all things we can talk about next week, uh, how we're all vibration and frequency. And on the subatomic level, we vibrate in and out of reality. We're piercing through the veil. We're realizing that we are not what we think we are. That physicality is not physicality. It's a paradox. Physical existence should not exist because we have now realized that we're all energy. This is the age we're going into. And since we're going into that age, we're utilizing external instruments from the age we just came from, which is the material age, to harness the subatomic world. Great example, CERN, the hydrogen collider there. 
What are they doing? Well, they're actually focusing on the subatomic world and trying to figure out how it works and what are they using? Materials, externally created technology to do so. So that is where we're going in right now. And then we go back to the Treta Yuga and the Satya Yuga. So I'm just breaking this down for you because this is completely connected to the frequency of the planet and the vibration and the awareness and information that is out on the planet at the time. Sound and vibration is everything, right? It's always been here if, since the beginning and the beginning was the word, we're all frequency. We're made out of subatomic vibrations, but every age that we're in, we translate that differently. We utilize that different, differently. There's some ages like the Kali Yuga for over a thousand plus years where we completely were disconnected to that realization. So as we move further up and back into this trajectory of this consciousness evolution, we are going into a state where we're now realizing that we can use sound and vibration more intentionally. So part of the reason why I'm giving this to you is hope as well as information is look, look what's going on. We're shifting out of this age and we are inevitably going into a reality where we understand everything is, is vibration. As we're doing that, this kind of class and these courses are the preliminary phases of this age where it's all about frequency. We're right here, look, at the beginning of the frequency age, right? So it's only, it's only like right on point, the fact that we're actually talking about this right now and, and that this is gonna be an information that's not only going to change the world and technology and, uh, and transportation and food and um, the way we live, the way we understand each other, and the fact that we can heal all types of sicknesses and ailments using frequencies, that's just the beginning right here. We have all of this to look forward to where we're gonna be learning and uncovering a lot more. Okay, I'm just gonna check the chat really quick and then we're gonna get into the sound instruments. Are we, are we, Joe is asking, are we in a split half and half? Uh, are you referring, Joe, are you referring to the fact that the Kali Yuga is split. Can you clarify that a little bit? I'll give you a moment here just to write down what you're talking about. Are we are we split in between cycles right now? So we are technically Again, this depends who you ask, right? If you look at this graph, we're no longer within a cycle, a split within it. We've passed this transition phase. That was 1900. We are fully in the next age now, the energy age. Started around 1900. Max Planck, I think he was born in the late 1800s, 190 something in the beginning, was the first realization of the subatomic world. Quantum physics got created in the early 1900s. So we are actually. I don't think we're split in an age. Some people think that we're still in a transitionary age. We've entered the next age. It's just that we're in the beginning phases of it. And part of the beginning phases of it is experimenting and realizing that all these things are theoretically possible. Now, how can we implement them into reality? Uh, I'll give you just a little disclaimer here, a little detour, okay? Let's talk UFOs for a second. So the whole UFO disclosure that's going on right now um, in the mainstream there at first we were told by the government officials and the whistleblowers and all that <clears throat> that these craft are doing things that we that are impossible that's what we were told these craft are doing things that are impossible right within a year or two that was changed to <clears throat> well actually they're not doing things that we think are impossible they're doing things that we've only proven in the subatomic world and only know exist within theory. So it's not like they're impossible. We know in theory they should be possible. It's just that we have not created any technology yet to be able to do this. What are some of these technologies? Faster than light speed, tra um, traveling at faster than the speed of light. We've seen some um, UFOs doing things like that. Um, vanishing, cloaking, going in and out of reality. Um, going faster than the speed of sound within a split second, like multiple times the speed of sound, right? All of that that I just specified is all sound and vibrational awareness, frequency awareness, subatomic world awareness, quantum physics awareness. So 
it's not that we're seeing all of these things happen and we're like, oh, wait a second, this, this isn't possible. This can't be happening. What's going on? We're like, whoa, wait a second. This is like where we will probably be in a thousand years from now. Why is it? Who's doing this? Right? We can't even figure out how to do this yet. And if you ask some whistleblowers, they'll say that we've already done it, but this is what they're telling us conventionally. And so just imagine this, think of this, right? We're in this age, we're exiting this age, we're entering this age, the, the energy age. Right at the beginning of this age, we're doing exactly what we should do, which is figure out that we're subatomic beings and everything is quantum physics. But as the time we enter this age, all of a sudden we see technology that is a thousand years into our evolution in our future already existing. And we're talking about it and some of it's been reverse engineered and um, uh, some of this technology has actually been captured, right? So what could that mean for our future that we are literally discovering and have probably have the technology of this energy world that if we just kept on this trajectory, we probably wouldn't have reached for maybe a few hundred years from now. To me, this symbolizes that we can we have the potential to actually exponentially evolve our consciousness into the next plane of existence into a golden age that we didn't have before and a lot of mystics and spiritualists they say that as well is that we're actually skipping ages and we're in this process now where we're figuring out how to create a golden age on earth by breaking free from the shackles of the karmic cycle that i just outlined for you and creating unity on earth that we can sustain over hundreds of thousands of years rather than having to continuously go down this devolution and evolution path over and over again so that's just a little thing and yeah maybe it's us from the future as joe just specified on fox news actually when they asked um who are uh, who do you think these beings are that are flying these ufos the answer was from one of the anchors there i don't know maybe it's us from the future so people are starting to think of all these components and these concepts now, which is really amazing. So I'm excited to see what is going to manifest out of this. And if you follow any of our other events, you know that we do a lot of information in regards to that.